Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Ron Myers. I'm the director of editorial here at JOF. Um, and today we're going to have a webinar on imaging techniques of cell migration and axonal guidance. Um, so Dr. Inagaki is joining us today um, to present. He's a professor at the, um, the NARA Institute of Science and Technology. Um, so he, he published a paper with us on on a similar topic in 2021. Uh, so today he's gonna he's gonna be giving us some some updates, some different variations of the technique, and we will be recording the technique, uh, recording the webinar, and sending you a uh, recording of that afterwards for your records. And also, just so you know, feel free to um, ask any questions in the Q and A, and we can address those towards the end of the webinar. All right. Thanks again. And uh, okay, Dr. Inagaki, go ahead. So thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, I'm hello. Uh, I'm now Inagaki, and together with my colleague Takunori Minegishi, we will explain imaging techniques to analyze molecular mechanics for cell migration and axon guidance and cell motility to form a proper neural network. Uh, axons have to be navigated toward the right destination at the process called axon guidance. At the tip of the extending axon, there are highly motile structure, growth cone. Uh, to move forward, growth cone has to produce force onto the environment, which serves as adhesive substrate. On the other hand, uh, the direction and speed of growth cone migration is regulated in response to the environmental cue. So similar bidirectional uh, mechanical and chemical interactions are also required for cell migration. So uh, there are two types of axon guidance or cell migration uh, regulated by extracellular chemical cues. Uh, first is how, uh, chemotaxis regulated by diffuse flow chemical Q. Here, uh, the gradient of the attractive Q, netrin, is applied and growth cone turned toward net, net, netrin source. Another is a uh, haptotaxis regulated by substrate bound chemical Q. Here, uh, attractive Q, laminin, is coated on the substrate and growth cone migrate uh, uh, along uh, laminin. Axonal extensions is also regulated by mechanical cue. Here, uh, neurons are cultured on polyacryl amide gel with different stiffness, and they extend longer axon on stiffer substrate. Today, uh, we will explain two methods to analyze molecular mechanics uh, for such cell motility. One is uh, traction force microscopy, uh, which can uh, measure the cellular force exerted on the environment. The other is uh, spectral imaging analysis, uh, which can uh, monitor the molecular dynamics for the force generating mach machinery. A detailed protocols are published in a job paper. So uh, concerning the principle of uh, traction force microscopy, uh, here, uh, neurons are cultured on polyacrylamide gel embedded with small fluorescent beads. Uh, the force generated by growth cone is, uh, can be monitored by the deformation of the gel which can be followed by the bead movement. Uh, this is growth cone. Y you can see the bead movement. And not notably, uh, the bead mo mo in movement of the bead uh, is in increased by natural stimulation. Uh, because we know the elastic elasticity of the gel, uh, we can calculate the direction and amplitude of the force. So here, nettling stimulation increases the attraction force from three to six pascal. 
we can also measure the traction uh, uh, force uh, in various cell area. Uh, this is example. Uh, this is migrating neurons. Uh, you can see a prominent traction force is produced at the growth cone of the leading edge of migrating neuron. Uh, this is another example, uh, dendritic philopodia, uh, precursors of uh, dendritic spine, which uh, form post synapse. So these tiny spine uh, produce uh, traction force to form dendritic spine. The, from how uh, such a uh, traction force is formed can be uh, explained by the clutch mechanism proposed by Michison and Kashina. So at the leading edge of the uh, growth cone, uh, actin filament undergo directional polymerization and depolymerization and flow retrogradely. Uh, this is actin retrograde flow. This plays a role of uh, the engine of force generating machinery. Growth cone also pro, uh, express cell adhesion molecule, uh, which plays a role of uh, a wheel. And adhesive substrate play a role of a uh, role. Uh, if a link up mo molecule uh, mechanically couple actin flow and cell adhesion molecule, uh, such molecule is co called clutch molecule. We transmit the movement of actin flow to the substrate and produce traction force for axon out outgrowth. And movement of such a uh, mo molecule can be uh, monitored by the second method, speckle imaging analysis. I will explain the principle. Uh, Spectral imaging analysis can be performed using a, a standard epifluorescence time-lapse microscope. But there are two key points. The first point is transfect neurons with a small amount of plasmid DNA for labeling. Uh, this cross cone express a uh, light duct and halotag actin. Uh, light, light duct is, as you know, used to mon uh, label actin filament. And halotag actin is used to perform speckle imaging of actin molecules. So only a small portion of actin is labeled, so we, we can see the movement clearly. But when the large part, of, part is uh, labeled, we cannot see, see such a movement. So overexpression is not so good. The second point is to close the field of the diaphragm of the microscope to illuminate a minimum area. Uh, because the signals of a, a single molecule is very weak. So when the uh, diaphragm is fully open, we cannot see the signal as you see here. But when uh, the uh, uh, area uh, uh, diaphragm is uh, appropriately uh, narrowed down. Uh, the uh, base, base signal uh, is di uh, diminished and, and speckle of single molecule appear like this. So this is similar to observation of the stars in the sky. When the city light is bright, uh, we, we cannot see the dim stars, but the uh, city light is turned down, we can see uh, many stars clearly. Again, uh, we can perform speckle imaging analysis in, at various cell area. Uh, this is a, a gross cone of the leading process of migrating neurons, and, and this is tiny dendritic spine. And this is the leading edge of rapidly migrating leukocyte. And next, uh, we, uh, I will explain how such a method can be applied for the analysis of molecular mechanics for force generating machinery. 
uh, explaining uh, our da data of shooting as an example. Uh, first, uh, interaction with actin filament retrograde flow. We previously reported that a protein shooting is highly accumulated at axonal growth cone and promote axon outgrowth. And this is a speckle imaging of shooting. And shooting speckle appear and shoot or flow and disappear. So this appearance uh, indicate its attachment to the actin flow. And sh uh, shoot behavior represent movement, its movement with actin, actin flow. And uh, disappearance indicate its detachment. So uh, spectral imaging can provide a key information to explain how shooting uh, uh, promote axon outgrowth. Uh, we already know that shooting function as a clutch molecule that links actin flow and cell adhesion molecules such as L L1. And using spectral imaging analysis, we, we can ob observe the movement of all these components. For example, actin filament and shooting and advance. All these molecules undergo retrograde flow. Uh, spectral imaging analysis can also uh, analyze clutch coupling, the key event for uh, traction force generation. Uh, this slide uh, explains how growth cone produce traction force in response to nettling signal. When growth cone uh, uh, receive nettling signal, a protein kinase PAC1 is activated under the signaling of CDC42 and RAC1. And this phosphorylation promote uh, this uh, clutch coupling and then uh, produce uh, increased traction force. Uh, as we have seen. The importantly, uh, dominant negative shooting, which disrupts the interaction between shooting and L1, inhibit a uh, naturally induced increase of the force. And concurrently, uh, promotion of clutch coupling disturb act acting retrograde flow and dec decrease uh, acting flow. This is a time cost and nettling stimulation de decreased uh, uh, the speed of actin flow. And th this is a quantitative da data. Okay. So importantly, the decrease of the flow speed increase the efficiency of actin polymerization to push the membrane forward and promote axon outgrowth. And uh, again, uh, shooting dominant negative mutant inhibit the increase of axon outgrowth. So clutch, uh, clutch coupling can be monitored by increase of the traction force and decrease of the speed of act acting flow. Uh, traction for uh, uh, speckle imaging can also uh, further uh, identify the regulated interface for clutch coupling. Uh, this is a case of uh, lamini induced axonal haptotaxis. So when shooting or L1 is knocked down, uh, haptotaxis is disrupted and neurons extend axons randomly. So again, uh, shooting and L1 is involved in lamini induced haptotaxis. And importantly, the actin flow speed is decreased on lamini, and traction force uh, is increased on lami uh, lamini. So this indicates lamini promote uh, clutch coupling. Uh, to analyze the regulatory interface for the clutch coupling, uh, we perform a speckle imaging of L1. Uh, this is growth cone. Uh, this is a border between lamini and polyrethrin, and growth cone migrate on laminin side. And you can see here uh, the 
uh, L1 flow. And this is a time course of L1 flow on laminin side and polydecine side. And we observe uh, two, two types of uh, uh, L1 movement. Uh, one is L1 stop on the substrate, like wheel grip on the row. The other is uh, L1 slip retrogradely on the substrate. And importantly, the ratio of uh, uh, grip phase is larger on laminin side. And L1 here, and L1 flow speed is slower on lam laminin side. The force to pull the bond between L1 and substrate is derived from actin flow. So when the, this force is uh, exceeded uh, uh, a threshold, the bond break and everyone slip literally. So our data indicate that lamini promote the interface between L1 and substrate. Uh, this is uh, this summarizes the regulated uh, interface for chemotaxis and haptotaxis. So a clutch system involving shooting and L1 uh, promote uh, uh, chemotaxis and haptotaxis through these clutch interfaces. And although I cannot uh, show the detailed data, but we recently reported that this uh, interface also promote mechanosensitive axon outgrowth. Uh, finally, we will explain the uh, actin polymerization. Again, uh, this gross cone express uh, life act and halotag actin. And extension rate of uh, actin filament uh, can be mo monitored by li life act. And, it, and speckle imaging can monitor the rate of actin filament retrograde flow. Uh, so the actin polymerization rate can be uh, calculated by the sum of actin filament extension rate and actin filament retrograde flow rate, as you see here. Uh, interestingly, uh, our data uh, indicated that nitrogen stimulation not only promote clutch, clutch coupling, but also uh, promote actin polymerization because act, uh, promotion of act, actin pro polymerization is uh, uh, increase uh, uh, engine rotation speed of this fourth, fourth generation machinery. So promotion of clutch coupling and actin polymerization would uh, cooperate for the efficient uh, uh, control of uh, axonal navigation. So this is a summary. Uh, the, by the combination of traction force microscopy and speckle imaging, uh, we can uh, monitor traction force, a molecular interaction with actin, actin retrograde flow, clutch coupling, regulatory interface for clutch coupling, and actin polymerization. As uh, actin polymerization is observed at the various cell region, which undergo uh, dynamical morphological change. So we hope uh, these techniques will provide a uh, uh, useful strategy to de decipher the molecular me mechanics for uh, uh, cell motility. Uh, this is a contributors. Uh, the traction force microscopy and speckle imaging I showed today is uh, introduced and established in the laboratory by these people. And thank you for your attention. All right, thank you so much for the excellent presentation. Um, so if anyone, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to add those in the Q&A. Um, so the question here is, can these types of studies be done in 3D culture? And if so, how?
Uh, okay. Uh, uh, basically, we are doing in 2D culture, but also semi, semi 3D culture, we per per perform uh, these te techniques. Okay, so for, for example, for uh, traction force microscopy, we will uh, 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 use a cul culture on polyacrylic amide gel, but also uh, we, we will also add uh, other uh, uh, gel, gel, gels on, on this. And then we, we, we perform such a, a study uh, analysis we perform for the analysis of neural migration. Okay, thank you. But also, uh, th this is quite an important question. So, for example, uh, how to say, uh, acting ret retrograde flow, uh, as a people uh, pu publish, uh, there's acting fl retrograde flow on uh, uh, in the growth cone and also then uh, then dendritic spine. Yeah, yeah. One more question here. Um, is there any factor to prevent actin polymerization? Uh, so basically, uh, if, for example, if, if uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, for poly polymerization, so life act is also uh, pro uh, reported some uh, effect. But if you uh, express very uh, low amount of, uh, for example, uh, halotag actin, su such a problem can be uh, avoided. So uh, we, we don't feel some difficulty uh, or affect. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. I think that's all the questions we have here mm -hmm. today. Um, mm -hmm. So thank, thank you everyone for the excellent questions. Um, and thank you, Dr. Anagaki, for a great presentation here. Um, and we, so we will be sending out an email in the next few days with a recording. And also, if you do have any questions about Jove or any questions for Dr. Anagaki, um, you know, please feel free to respond to that email and we can answer those questions at, uh, at that time. All right. Okay, th uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. And have, enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, bye-bye.